Yep, we can do it. We can get over this log. When we come up to different types of roads, occasionally there's obstacles that may cause you to turn around. We can make it over this log. I know we could go around, but there'd just be no fun in that. All right, so just going after an obstacle like this randomly is a really great idea. Two major considerations we wanna pay attention to. One is the rolling point of the tire. If you take your axle here and you run straight after the tire, below that, that point is your rolling point of the tire. On a log, generally about the halfway point, and if you go above that, that's the rolling point. And if you can see on this, those don't quite line up, which means we need to get a little bit of extra loft on it. On a dirt bike, that's easy. I can come up, I can gas it, get the front end to loft up and over the log. On an adventure bike, that's not so great. The second consideration for adventure bikes going over a large obstacle happens to be the ground clearance here for the skid plate. It's not a huge concern if we can get the front tire over, but it's definitely a consideration because if you come off the throttle too soon, you're gonna set that skid plate up on top of that log. And if it's off camber, that may cause you to tip over. So there's an easy way to get around this particular dilemma. So let's go take a look at the other side of the log here. So the plan is I'm gonna to attempt to cross the log from this side. So I'm gonna put up what's called a kicker up next to the log. I wanna make this log shorter. So what I look for is a log about half the diameter that I can put up along the base. That way I'm only crossing the small log and then riding onto the larger log. I couldn't find one. So what I'm doing instead is I found several smaller sticks and some different bark. I'm packing those in here up on this side of the log to create a ramp. By doing this, I'm gonna allow the front wheel to roll up onto the top of this log. And as long as that's still in the air as it crosses over, my skid plate won't make contact, and my back wheel will be able to travel up and over this. At least that's the theory that's gonna to happen today, and I'm gonna give this a shot. This is a pretty good sized log for a loaded GS, and today I am fully loaded. I've got all my camping gear, food, water, everything's on board right now. You should definitely practice this a lot before you try to do it on a trip. The key for obstacles is to recognize that the bigger the obstacle, the slower the approach. So I'll be approaching this at a near stop or a walking pace. Add some throttle and we'll clutch the front end to lighten up over the ramp. As the back tire comes up onto the ramp, we're gonna pull the clutch in so we get a clean rollover. So nice and slow, this way we don't push our log out of the way, and then up and over. There we go, nice. So when I'm teaching riders during the adventure camp, we always start off with much smaller obstacles than what we played with here today. So, what did I do wrong? You stalled it. <laughs> no, I mean, I stalled it because... So, okay, it's, you're, you're hitting it hard, one thing. So okay. when you hit this log, see how it rolled? Yeah. That's because you plowed it with the front end. Okay. That you pushed it. So what you didn't get was the blip. So when you come okay. up, you okay. want to be able to have the clutch out. You're still trying to clutch and blip it. What you want to do is let the clutch out, just give a little bit of a blip to give it a little bit of a rise. Okay. That allows that front end to, to climb over. And then once the back end goes, then you feather the power back in so you don't get the back end kicking up or spinning. Got it. Yep. Sometimes we even get the opportunity to get stuck on a tree and learn how to get unstuck off the tree. Holy crap, what a piece of, what a piece of garbage. Look at this, look at it. Oh, oh no. This is garbage table. Bigger skid plate. So, again, the idea here is if we go forward on this, like this, now we're trying to get it up and over. We don't have any back. So, the same thing works with this. You may not be able to get far or far back. You can't pull the front wheel up because the bikes are too big, but we still have run out. So, as we get that motion forward, 
That way we get a little bit of motion so it kicks forward. If it wasn't quite so dug out already, you should be able to hit it and have almost no wheel spin whatsoever when you hit the log. Because once you start spinning and polishing, you're, you're, you're losing the traction. So when you practice, start with something small, perfect your technique, and slowly work up. That way when you do come across something larger that might obscure your path to travel or divert your day's plan, you can just keep right on going 